Now the Mavericks were 10 games below 500 as recently as January, but give Dallas credit to the way it finished. It finished the season 28 and 18 to finish the year 41 and 41. Still a very disappointing season as the Mavericks did miss the playoffs. So what does Mark Cuban think about it? Well, he compares this season to a bad breakup. He's glad it's over, but he's ready to move on. So the Rangers fall now to 21 and 21 on opening day. First time ever, though, they played the Astros as a member of the AL West, making this special day even a bit more intriguing. Ready to go. We're ready to go. This is the best time of the year, opening day. It might be hard to argue that point. From the crack of the bat to the beauty on the big screen and the traditions being made with a father and his daughter, there really is something special about opening day. There's always new hope. You know, each of the 30 teams out there um, is expecting big things this year. It's the first step in a long journey. I mean, uh, you know, it's like you're sitting there looking up at the mountain that is the season and you know, you start to climb. It's tradition for me. I went to the very first opening day in 72 when the Rangers played in Arlington against the California Angels, and I've been a diehard Ranger fan ever since. So with Houston moving into the AL West, will this evolve into a diehard rivalry? Houston already hates North Texas, so it's a given, right? Not so fast. You can't force a rivalry or you can't just say two teams are rivals um, just because of location, but it definitely can happen. Before it was just like, you know, kind of, uh, well, they're not in the same division, you know, it's, they play for the silver boot, but now that they're in the same division, I think in a couple of years when the Astros get to the point where they're going with the young players and everything, that it'll, 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 it'll get a little bit more heated. Sunday's game is definitely a big deal, and this series might one day prove that everything is bigger in Texas even if the youngest fans might need a little help to get going. What baseball team do you like? Uh, uh, we won. The Astros pumpkin. Yeah. I think at some point he'll learn how to take care of that. This is what's weird. The Houston Astros, the team that won a major league worst 55 games last year, now lead the AL West with their victory over the Rangers tonight. As you could see a little bit earlier, Bill, Astros fans didn't quite know what to do. They were so excited by leading the division. All right, Gina, let me ask you about uh, the, well, I guess it's sort of the daily question about the elephant in the room, and that would be the CEO of this team, uh, Nolan Ryan. You were there in San Antonio, had a chance to talk to him there. What, what is the latest on Nolan? What do you make of the whole situation? I can tell you this, Nolan wants absolutely nothing to do with discussing his situation right now. He, we talked to him on Friday. He ended the conversation pretty abruptly, still said he hasn't made a decision and he has no time frame for doing so. I get the sense that he is in ongoing discussions with the Rangers owners and partners. Seeing all these fans out here for this team, what is it like? Well, I don't want to cry, but he sure. <laughs> I, to say I'm touched to my heart, but I'm beyond that, beyond that. Don Carter, enjoy it with your family today. It's a wonderful day. Don Carter. Carter, his wife right there, along with the family. Don Carter is, is a man who usually avoids the spotlight, usually avoids the camera, on the verge of tears right there, very emotional. This is someone who has loved this franchise for so long since he brought the Mavericks to North Texas during the 80-81 season. I can tell you, this is a truly, truly special day for the Carter family. One by Dirk, over Bob Lute for the win. He gets the ball. Oh, wow. The Mavericks take it in overtime. About 30 miles east of the American Airlines Center in Terrell, Texas, is one of the most rabid Mavericks fans you'll ever meet. My husband loves to watch the Dallas Mavericks, so that gives him a lot of pleasure. For Sherry Webb, her life is all about making her husband happy and comfortable. He has lots of drainage that drain back into his throat, and I have to suck him out probably six or seven times a day. Barry Webb is confined to a bed in his living room well. and needs a ventilator to breathe. But that hasn't stopped the engaging 61-year-old from supporting his favorite team. This is our little sheet where he spells out the words for me. I love Mark Oh, Cuban. He loves the Mavericks so much that they inspired him to dress like one. 
While watching a game one night, he noted that Mark Folliwell and Bob Ortigal looked pretty good. Lombardo's outfits the team, so the Webs contacted the custom clothier. And I explained to them that my husband was handicapped and couldn't get in the uh, car. They come out and measured him and made the jacket just to fit. Or he knew exactly what he wanted, a specific black fabric, the navy collar, and a certain little country western design in the back. And, uh, is very unique. This is the jacket they made. My husband loves the band collars. The shirt has got the band collar too. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the little material in it, it kind of looks like a little Texas. And then they put his name in the jacket. Mm -hmm. And then on the sleeve, they put his initials. BPW. BPW. Barry Paul Webb. Webb. Dana Payton delivered the finished product and was struck at Barry's enthusiasm. He absolutely loved it. It was everything that he imagined, that you know, he designed, it was exactly what he wanted. I mean, you just wouldn't even know that he was sick. When he heard about the connection, Mark Folliwell had to meet Barry. Barry, nice to meet you. How are you? And like yes. anyone who spent time with the webs, metal, Mark got a better day. understanding of just what this man and his wife were all about. In 1966, Barry volunteered to be a Marine. He became an M60 machine gunner in the Vietnam War and remarkably survived six battles. But while in Vietnam, he contracted Agent Orange. That has ultimately led to where he is today, a devout family man who can only move his left hand and is dying from Lou Gehrig's disease. He's not, he's mad, not about mad about it. He's, he's not, not mad, mad about it. it. He's, not, he's not sad about it. He was glad to serve his country. And that's what's so impressive about Barry. The once tall and proud man is still proud and not bitter about a thing. He's at peace with his future and has prepared every last detail of his departure, including what to wear. That's right, the custom-made Mavericks-inspired ensemble that he's never once tried on is for his funeral. This is what he wanted. He said, I've never had a custom jacket and I always wanted one. And he says, I'm going to go out in style. For over 20 years, I've never seen anybody want to be, have a pick at their burial suit. He's going to be the best dressed man at his funeral. Barry can decide when that funeral will be and has already said his goodbyes. His right hand's already turning and he can't walk anymore and uh, his left hand's starting to turn. So he's, the doctor said that when he got, before he didn't want to stay on the ventilator anymore, he could actually pick his own day. Wonderful. Life. He's led a wonderful life. He's prepared. He can leave knowing he's made an impact on the people he's met. Just their positive attitude. It was just amazing. I mean, it, I knew that I had just come across a true American hero. You know, he made a tremendous impression on me and have all the respect in the world for him. And perhaps most importantly, Barry will leave knowing that his best friend, soulmate, and wife of 40 years is also at peace thanks to the firm belief they share. I know that when he leaves here, he's going to a better home, and I know that he won't have any more pain, you know, and, and I know that he'll, he'll be better. He'll be better there. And I tell him he'll be in heaven looking over me and watching over me, and we'll be back together soon. Those tears don't last too long. Barry's spirit won't let them, because whether it's a new suit or his favorite basketball team, Barry Webb was a man who relished every moment he had. For The Score, I'm Gina Miller. And Barry Webb will now get to wear that suit that he so cherished. He died on Thursday as he took himself off his ventilator. He was 61 years old. The walk is the same. A little New Testament, Old Testament, in case we got a Old Testament person. The message the same. That swing is still there. But the name on Josh Hamilton's chest is definitely not the same after signing a five year, $125 million deal with the Angels in December. You feel this is the right place for you? I do. I do. Um, you know, it's. Uh, Everybody always, they're going to say, you know, oh, he just went where the money was or whatever. You know, that's the criticism. <clears throat> I've been criticized for worse things. That's true. Like the last regular season game of 2012 when he dropped a routine fly ball against Oakland with the AL West on the line. The way that the season ended for you. 
is there anything that you would like to do over? If you look back over what happened towards the latter half of 2012. Win. <laughs> That's as simple answer as I can give you. Not that we didn't go after it hard, um, but just been a little more focused on, okay, not saying, okay, if we, well, if we lose tonight, we'll do it tomorrow. If we lose tomorrow, we'll do it the next day. Then there was the criticism that he and his agent didn't give the Rangers a chance to counter the Angels' offer. And they had the first opportunity and just kind of drug their feet on it. And, um, you know, my wife put it best, you know, you. Uh, you know, if you had a relationship with somebody, you don't let them date somebody else and kind of give their heart away. Probably a week or two um, before uh, the decision was made uh, as far as coming to the Angels, um, you know, I finally had that feeling of, that settled feeling of, okay, uh, I really don't feel like I'm going to move back in Texas. And it wasn't because, I, I mean, I hadn't even spoken with the Angels yet at that point. What was that first conversation with Wash like? I'm not allowed to say it on TV. Because <laughs> we know what Wash can say. He, he can let it fly. He can let it go a little bit. Um, no, he just wished me luck and just told me how much he appreciated um, all the effort that I'd given him the past five years. And I said the same thing, you know. It was a joy to play for him. Josh! Josh! Angels fans have embraced Hamilton, but what about those in Arlington now? The ones who loved his success and story of redemption then seemed to turn quickly following his departure. I felt like he sort of gave the Texas Ranger fans a bad rap, saying that, you know, we were booing them the last couple games because he, he really struggled towards the end of the season. And that's not fair. We've been cheering for him for years. You know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it's always Texas, or especially Dallas, has always been a football town. Um, so. The good with the bad is uh, they're supportive, uh, but they also got a little spoiled uh, at the same time uh, pretty quickly. Um, you know, you can understand uh, like a, a really true, true baseball town. Uh, and, there's, and there's true baseball fans in Texas, but it's not a true baseball town. What do you think the reaction will be for that uh, Friday game in Arlington the first weekend of April? Uh, it would be mixed feelings uh, from crowd. I mean, the people who really get it. Uh, we'll cheer. The people who don't, will boo. Um, either way, I'm going to do what i got to do to try to help my team win. For The Score, I'm Gina Miller.